Hello, my name is Sergei Petronia. I'm a member of MariaDB project, and uh, this talk is about MariaDB and the extra features that make it a better branch of MySQL. <coughs> well, uh, the first, let's have a slide about MariaDB, what it is. So we position ourselves as a branch of MySQL with extra features. When we say branch and not a fork, we mean that we still periodically merge with MySQL, so we haven't diverged with them. Uh, unlike Drizzle, which is a fork, which don't merge from MySQL anymore, we, 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 we still remain compatible with MySQL. It's possible to merge changes from MySQL to MariaDB with some effort. Uh, we have only GPL, offer only GPL only license, unlike uh, Sun MySQL, which offers both GPL and commercial license. We strive to have more open development. We have all source code in public repository Launchpad. We simply don't have any private trees. Uh, we, we, we try to be more open towards external contributions. And our current state is that MariaDB 5.142, the number is based on MySQL release, which was merged into it, was made stable release on February 1st. Uh, <coughs> uh, just to avoid confusion, Maria is also the name of the storage engine one of the storage engines that ships inside MariaDB. MariaDB is the name for the whole database system. <coughs> so the extra features that we have at the moment are in MariaDB 5.1 and our stable release are, uh, well, in the, in the order of their relative importance or impact. It's an approximate, of course. First is the extra DB storage engine. Uh, then they have slow query log, extended statistics in the slow query log, uh, microsecond precision shown in process list, we've got table elimination optimization, we've got PBXT storage engine, we've got Maria storage engine as I've already mentioned, and we've got thread pool support, uh, we've got support for creation collations, and uh, last, and it was added last, is the Federated X storage engine. And this talk will be mainly dedicated to overview of what these features are and how they can be useful. Uh, before we go to that, uh, let's, uh, not all of the features are developed by MariaDB crew. Uh, basically, this is a slide that highlights with the colors that uh, for extra DB, PBXT, and Federated X, X basically for our storage engine, we have an upstream which we periodically merge from, uh, and the developers of these of this storage engines are not m m members of MariaDB team, but we collaborate with them on getting their, their code to work with ours. Uh, slow query log and microsecond precision uh, in process list will base it on uh, uh, third-party patch for MySQL, which has never made it into, which wasn't merged into MySQL mainline. So we took it, improved it upon it, and merged it into MariaDB. Oh. Table elimination optimization was developed at, at MariaDB from scratch, so you won't find it anywhere except MariaDB. And then Maria storage engine, thread pool support, and creation collation are the features that were developed at Sun, partially by current MariaDB members, partly by those who remain uh, Sun MySQL employees, but they ha have never been r released in the stable release, but they have been published, uh, their source code has been published, so we was able to take it and integrate it into MariaDB with some fixes and uh, certain improvements. Uh, so if you <coughs> go to the first, to the first feature, which is the extra DB storage engine, and uh, for XtoDB storage engine, uh, well, we'll have, we'll have only a couple of slides dedicated to it because that's a, uh, it has a lot of improvements and we could have a talk on only about XtoDB. So I'll be quite brief here. Basically, this is a patched version of InnoDB plugin, where InnoDB plugin is a version of InnoDB which was produced by Oracle with more features than regular InnoDB. And uh, X2DB was produced by uh, a consulting company called Percona. Those are the people who are b b behind the MySQLPerformanceBlog.com website, which publishes a lot of articles on MySQL performance. And uh, 
within X2DB, uh, the primary thing is that uh, they, they have performance improvements for multi-CPU systems similar to MySQL 5.4. Uh, I have to remind that uh, MySQL 5.4 have never been released. It has been, only been available as a preview. And while X2DB has, has these features in a released version, and we have it in MariaDB. Uh, they provide more diagnostic information, uh, and the, the whole array of miscellaneous features that, will, that the DBA of a highly loaded and highly concurrent dat database might find useful, like ability to save and preload back buffer pool. S buffer pool is sort of in the DB's uh, disk cache, so you can start with the warm cache and not have any effects when, of starting with the cold cache. And they have index statistics collection fixes uh, and many more. Unfortunately, I cannot describe them in detail because it would just take too long. Those, if you are running a, a, a website on the, in the DB or, and the experience uh, performance issues, you really should uh, bookmark the MySQL performance blog website and <laughs> check out their recommendations and knowledge that they post there. So now let's move to m more easier and comprehensible to understand features like slow query lock and microsecond precision to process list. Uh, <coughs> Uh, slow query log is a standard is a MySQ feature that has been log long ago in MySQL. Basically, you could specify slow query log uh, file, and MySQL would uh, print their text files, to pr print their queries, which uh, uh, took b more than a certain given amount of time to execute. Uh, extended statistics add log slow verbosity option, which at the moment has only one valid value query plan. And it adds a filtering where you can get names. Uh, you, could, uh, you could filter administration, administrative queries like alter table, create drop, and other detail operations. You could filter select queries by the fact whether they do file sort, whether they do file sort with putting data on disk, whether they run full joins, full scans. Uh, and you could, filter, you could also filter queries by the fact whether they fit into query, whether they hit the query cache or miss, and, uh, and you could filter whether the, the queries that use temporary tables. The log slow rate limit shows how, uh, allows to print not every, every slow query, which can be quite a lot, but every nth slow query, so you can have a sample. Basically, before in MySQL, a, slow, a typical contents of slow uh, query log was like the above, and like the below, you see that edit items highlighted in red. It prints thread ID, it prints schema, and then you get the important part where you see that the, where the query did, did the full scan, where it did the full join, where it used temporary tables, and so forth. This becomes especially useful when, in, when, when, when query execution plan depends on its parameters. So it, it, it might be the case where you, you, you get query to run slow for some parameters, but when you run it with others, it runs fast. So it gives more observability. <coughs> Microsecond precision in process list, it's another patch by Percona. And uh, the idea is that it displays milliseconds with fraction in show process list, and that's useful for analyzing a lot of small queries. Uh, when one does a select from information schema dot process list in MySQL, one gets only number of seconds in time column, while in MariaDB there, uh, there is also time milliseconds, which shows time in milliseconds, and that's useful when you, if you got queries which run less than a second and you need to discriminate and find out which, which ones of them are the, the take more than the others. Uh, the above two patches uh, been, have been uh, used as a patches for MySQL, so they're reasonably safe to use because uh, there has been some field testing. <laughs> uh, then I move to the feature that uh, is unique to MariaDB. It is table elimination optimization. This is an optimization for queries over highly normalized data. 
uh, it's present under its name table animation in big databases like it's present in Oracle and SQL Server. Uh, as far as I'm informed, it's not present in PostgreSQL. Uh, the basic idea is that you detect out our joints which have unused inner sites and then delete those inner sites. Uh, basically, when we have an outer join uh, of two tables and such that the select list does not include the inner table and the where condition does not refer to inner table either, then that means that, and also there is uh, the, the, the condition in the own expression is such that we, we see that is, it has table two dot primary key equals something from table one. Basically that means that uh, th for each record of table one there can be at not more than one match. Or that condition gives us that. And since it's outer join, if there are no matches, we'll get a null complemented record. And that means that uh, uh, there will be always one match. It will be either a null record or not. Uh, <coughs> so, and, and in that case, it is apparent that we don't really care whether table two had any matches and if it had what they were. So we can remove table two. So, the, so far, this has looked looked like a relational algebra exercise. Now let's see how that kind of, how that is practically useful. Suppose we have a data uh, and we want to store it in a highly normalized way. For instance, if you get, if you get a list of actors with names, dates of birth, and their ratings, and uh, normally we would, the sort of default approach is to store, just create a table with three columns, name, date, and rating. And the problem with that is, uh, as uh, with all denormalized data storage, is that you can't easily add attribute because it requires a long alter table. It's difficult to have attributes with, which apply only to a few, only to a small fraction of actors because your data set grows bigger. If you, if most of your actors are unrated, you get nulls in many columns, and that will be stored quite inefficiently in a row-based storage. Uh, so the standard approach to that is to create uh, three tables instead. Create a base table with AC, well, it's called here anchor, which will uh, denote anchors, and then create a table for names, create a table for dates of births, and create a table for ratings. Over here, the, the table for ratings can also change. Uh, we assume that ratings also change over time, so we've got a from date, from date column, which... Uh, from that column, so we can store the history. Uh, with, with this scheme, we are much more flexible about our data storage. We can add remove attributes as we please. We can have attributes that other users don't care about. But when we want to query things, we would like to uh, we would like to actually, if if you want to get just a list of actors with their names and birth dates and current ratings, we have to write this huge outer join. Uh, uh, here, the, co the colors denote access to uh, attributes. So, for the name, we write in a left join with the name, and then for the birth date, we join with birth date. And for rating, we not only do a join, we also select from those uh, uh, <coughs> from uh, all possible ratings the one that is the last one and currently valid. That's what the subquery does here from date equals maximum date with, for this actor. Oh. <coughs> so apparently we don't want to write these selects all the time when we want to get actor and his name. So we just create a view. And uh, <coughs> after we have created the view, we can access it as written below. We just access it as a regular table. We just select, for example, rating from actors where is name, is some name, and it looks like a table. Uh, the problem is that it is a join, uh, inside it is a join, so every time you access this, MySQL would run the underlying join, and then just, uh, and uh, then just, and that would be an excessive. Uh, so here is a, in ex a demonstration how table elimination works. The first query, <coughs> The first query is about selecting a rating and uh, a birth date by name. So basically, it uses all three attributes, and you get what you would typically, what you would always get for 
In MySQL, you would get all four tables accessed. Uh, the second query is more interesting. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't care about dates of birth. So when you run it in explain in MariaDB, you will see that date of birth table is gone from explain, so we don't access it. Uh, that, that shows that if you don't, you can, this scheme allows one to easily add attributes uh, which other users don't care about because they will be removed by the optimizer. That will, you, 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 date of birth will have no overhead for those who, don't, who do not need it. Uh, the third query is an, an, another example here. We don't care about ratings, and you see that the ratings table is gone from the explain plan, and so it wouldn't be accessed. So we can have totally optional attributes. Uh, if you want to sum it up, uh, basically with table elimination, you can do normalization on optional historic data, which will cause you to, uh, to run to want to execute outer joins, and you will be able to create a normalize it, denormalize it view using left join constructs, and use this view, and you will get for it something like index only scans, where you, if you don't care about columns, you don't need it. Tables here, servers, indexes. <coughs> that's what table elimination optimization does, and that's feature that's unique to MariaDB. <coughs> so what do we got next? Next, the next feature is uh, Prime Base XT storage engine, and uh, <coughs> uh, Prime Base XT storage engine d is a third-party development that's developed at a company called Prime Base Technologies. We only merge it into MariaDB, and it is a transactional, acid compliant, and multi-version concurrency control by the storage engine. Uh, it is still by the <coughs> so how is it different from all other engines? The design choices are that it uh, uses certain write once methodology, so it stores its data in the, they call it D-log permanently. When they get uh, a new data, they just store it in the log, and then the table just keeps referring to the place in the log where the data was originally stored unlike uh, other transaction engines which would first write to certain log, then update the, uh, the place where the data is really to be stored. Uh, they do disk-based MVCC. It basically means that they store, uh, they're able to store different versions of the records on disk, so they're not limited by, uh, so the, the size of all uncommitted data is not limited by the size of memory, like it, like it is the case for other engines. Uh, th this gives them fairly fast, fairly fast commit because they, all of their data, when they need to do a commit, they have all of their data on disk already, and they actually don't care about uh, the versions, the wrong versions, because they are collected afterwards by a certain garbage collection process. Uh, they, they don't do any in-place updates. So they on, since they are log-based, they are on, always append new data. They don't uh, up, update anything in place. They just write a, a new version and change pointers, and then rely on that it is uh, uh, the, the unused data is garbage collected at some point. Well, th this can be both uh, strength and weakness. The strength that they commit fast, the weakness is that we rely on how, f how quick the garbage collector will be and whether it will become critical that the data file grows with all of, uh, grows too big with all of the old, older versions of the data. They don't have any un <coughs> they don't have an undo log. Their recovery just rolls forward based on the log on the forward log. <coughs> they also use, they are similar to my ISM in, 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 the, in the regard that they store uh, every table in a separate file and the set of its indexes in yet, in yet another separate file. So you can move the tables around just like in, with my ISM, you can put them on different storage. Dix. Uh, if, 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 if you look more at, at PBXT storage engine design, so it is, mm -hmm. 
indexes don't, I have sort of already mentioned that indexes do not need to be flushed on transaction commit because uh, the changes are made by, uh, the unneeded versions are removed by uh, garbage collector thread. Uh, in indexes uh, are updated in background by the garbage collector thread. They got operation IDs, that means that uh, modifications hmm, normally require simultaneous update of cache and transaction log. Hmm. I'm not sure what, what, what the last means. <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm, I'm not that fluent with, <laughs> with PBXT. <clears throat> ah. mm -hmm. Okay, so they basically batch the updates uh, when they, <clears throat> when they, they don't do updates on the fly. They, they write uh, the updates to the log and then uh, there is a, a there is a writer thread which collects all of the updates, groups them together, actually it sorts them, which gets the updates to the same locations grouped and writes them out. So this gives them reduced number of uh, write operations and they write in sorted order. So what does this mean for the end user? Why would one want to use the PBXT? Well, first, uh, according to the benchmarks, they are an emerging competitor to NDB in general high-performance LTP. They're, they show benchmarks which uh, show that they are better than NDB on nearly every MySQL gathering. <laughs> and <coughs> uh, uh, they are a new kid on the block, so they sort of have a user-friendly developer model where if you ask for something, you can make a more impact than, than with InnoDB. Uh, according to Vlad Kolesnik of PBXT, they take, uh, <coughs> they t PBXT better takes advantage of uh, properties of solid state drives because they don't, uh, they, they write first they do f fewer writes, uh, they do random reads, and that is uh, exactly the I.O. pattern that PBXT, so that, that the solid state drive is good at. They also group updates, so they, they write at once, uh, and since they write to their log uh, changes together and sequentially, that is exactly what, what solid state disk is good at, as opposed to rewriting a block every time. <coughs> uh, their upcoming features are they will have in memory tables. They already have them in actually in PBXT3 that merged into Maria yet. Uh, and they will have engine level replication for chase setups. Uh, at this point, uh, I have to point out the uh, effective SSD for a database session, which has already concluded. Uh, but I guess their slides will be published. <coughs> okay, besides uh, PBXT, we've got Maria storage engine. And Maria storage engine is, is based initially on my ISM code. So it's very much my ISM like. It got full text, it got GIS indexes. Uh, the goal for Maria was to, 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 to sorry, this is my scroll, to have a transactional my ISM. But at this point, it is only crash safe my ISM where you can set a table to be crash safe and uh, unlike my ISM, it wouldn't require any r r repair operations and will roll back or roll forward all changes if it crashes in the middle. But it's not fully transactional yet. It's, it's primary use at the moment is to, for SQL runtime temporary tables instead of my ISM. And that means that queries that need to use temporary table, like group by queries, union, uh, distinct, uh, count distinct and such, basically everything that shows using temporary in the explain plan, uh, they would not touch the disk uh, until uh, Maria's bu buffers are overflowed. So this, if you, for example, need to write a query which does a group by and uses and also selects blob or does a distinct with Maria tables, it wouldn't hit the disk unless it exhausts all memory and will have to do so. 
which is, an, which is which gives some improvement for these queries over regular MySQL where it is, will touch the disk by, because you have to write to MySQL. <coughs> Another feature which is a bit controversial is the thread pooling support. Uh, the, the, the <coughs> traditional MySQL model is that there is a one process uh, and one MySQL D process which uses uh, a separate client uh, connection, a separate thread for each client connection. So the number of connected clients means that the number of existing thread is equal to the number of existing threads. And the thread pooling model, we aim to serve n queries with m threads where m is fixed. Uh, it is activated as follows. You specify thread handling one thread per connection and then you specify thread pool size and that is a store uh, and you can use, and that is how many threads will be used to serve the, uh, all of the client connections. There is some problem with that, that it is one, one can connect with all 20 threads, with 20 clients, start 20 long queries, and totally block the server, because we will be unable to, because every, uh, any other uh, incoming request will be just waiting in the queue until f for these 20 queries to compete. Uh, uh, for that, we've got an extra port parameter and extra max connections. It's basically another port that MySQL will listen on, which you can uh, allow access only to administrative user two, and it will be able to log in and kill the query, and kill the offending queries. <coughs> Typically, one would expect that thread pooling would, uh, to a great extent, solve the problem of uh, performance degradation with too many connections. Unfortunately, it is not the case yet. Uh, for example, queries that run for a long time are wait for I.O. or locks or any other reason still occupy the thread pool. So if you get a de de manage to get a dead lock inside in the DB such that the one that causes the threads to wait till time out, they will sit and wait till time out. So the the threads on, in the pool will be busy waiting. And, that's, and uh, another problem is that uh, the experiments have shown that thread pooling can be slower than the traditional model for in high concurrency scenario. That's a problem because it's kind of exactly one of the things that we, it was expected to solve. However, we decided to put the thread pooling in anyway because it, is, it allows one to, oh, oops. We decided to include the thread and the release thread pooling anyway because uh, we've we seen uh, a, a real world user case where the application was uh, making a lot of connections while not having a lot of uh, actual uh, load. It, it, it was having pauses between connections because it was doing some other processing. Uh, and in that case, thread pool allowed it to have lots of active connections uh, serve it with f without lots of uh, lo lots of threads which saves memory when you have few threads so, it, so if that's that if, if that's the user y your case and you might benefit from thread pooling at this point but I would not recommend to use thread pooling right now if you are after after solving the problem of uh, performance degradation with too many clients <coughs> Uh, the next feature is uh, creation collations for Unicode. Basically, uh, MySQL has a creation collations uh, case insensitive for Latin and CP1250 char sets. And when you use default Unicode collation, you get uh, the case sensitive creation collation due to na native sorting. But what you cannot do with MySQL at the moment is that if you got a creation if you want to have creation case insensitive sorting and store Unicode data at the same time, that means that you are not unable to do so. You either get creation case insensitive sorting with Latin chosset, set or you get Unicode with case sensitive sorting. So uh, uh, Alexander Barkov, the MySQL chosset set specialist, produced the patch, but somehow it wasn't included in MySQL, it was not released. 
So we took it, integrated it into MariaDB, released it, and here you have it. Uh, we've got creation for UTF-8 and UKS-2, which is basically the two char sets that you need for Unicode. <coughs> Uh, and the, the last addition, the last feature is the Federated X storage engine. It was added shortly before the release, so we might uh, rely on its author for, uh, for, for, for the stability of this feature. The good thing is that if you don't use it, it is unlikely to have any impact. Uh, it is developed, this is an engine which is developed by the original author of Federated Engine, Patrick Galbraith. Uh, it is an improved version uh, of that engine. It includes bug fixes and transaction support. Uh, as I've already said, uh, it, this engine has not received much testing, so I'll do that in, in release. I'll, if something that doesn't work, you'll have to blame mostly Patrick, not us. <laughs> we can only say that if you don't use it, you, you wouldn't be affected. <laughs> okay, so here's a list of the features again, and that's what uh, we have to offer in the release. So at, at our stand, we are frequently asked uh, how can one actually upgrade to MariaDB from MySQL and what how much effort does it require? Here is the whole slide uh, dedicated to compatibility. Uh, MariaDB and MySQL are compatible with client libraries. Everything that's linked with MySQL will work against MariaDB library. Because Maria, for, for this reason, MariaDB library is called libmysql still. Uh, we are compatible with client server protocol. It means that you can use uh, any MySQL client application to connect to MariaDB server and vice versa. If you got the MariaDB client, which is at the moment the same as MySQL, you can connect back. Uh, we are compatible with regards to command line tool names, locations, uh, syntax of arguments of utilities and so forth. And that means that MariaDB by default has occupies the same port, socket, names as MySQL, so you can't install both at the same time. All of our packaging scripts at the moment will try to, will not refuse to install if you have MySQL, so you will have to remove MySQL first and then install MariaDB. Uh, and then MariaDB is supposed to just pick up the data, all of the data files and start in working at, in the same way like MySQL did only better with extra features. Uh, that's what I, <coughs> we, are, we have a comp fully compatible SQL dialect yet, there is no difference. Uh, we haven't tested any server plugins. If you got any UDF functions or any plugin storage engines, uh, you need to exercise caution because we do not guarantee that it works. I'm not sure whether, I don't, I'm not aware of any explicit compatibility break catches though, but that's something that hasn't been checked. We are compatible with the replication master slave, so you can, uh, if you, you can attach a MariaDB slave to MySQL master in all cases, and then hence bring up another host running MariaDB, MariaDB and check and experiment on that. Uh, you can run in reverse direction also, assuming that you don't use, uh, that MariaDB server do not use features that are not in MySQL. For example, if you are using PBXT tables, and apparently uh, that wouldn't be able to replicate to MySQL because MySQL has no PBXT, or if you're using creation collations. Uh, it is the same with the data directory. You can just stop the MySQL server and start MariaDB, and it will work without need to any con data conversions or upgrade or export import procedure. Uh, but it will work also backwards as long as uh, uh, MariaDB server did not use any features that are not in MySQL. That, that are not present in MySQL. So, so trying MariaDB should be extremely easy. Just stop your MySQL server, uh, put start the MariaDB server with the same parameters instead, and it should work of, out of the box. Uh, our further directions are uh, 
First, uh, the, first up, the next upcoming release is MariaDB 5.2, and we've got plans fixed for it. Basically, we intend to include for that only small and safe features. Uh, at the moment, we have their virtual columns patch, which is based on contribution by Andrei Zhakov. Basically, a table can have a, uh, columns which are com calculated from other columns as a function. Uh, the, uh, the important limitation here is that you cannot have indexes on these columns yet, but you can use them in anywhere where columns. You can if they are persistent. Sorry? You can make them persistent with the columns and then you can have data control. Well, I don't think so you, ha you can have indexes at the moment. The, you, there is an option to have them either persistent or not, but uh, I think it's not possible to have index on them. That's an, uh, having index is an hour to do. It's a much wanted feature because one would have essentially functional indexes when we get that. If you get a, but that's not the case yet, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, uh, the next is a set is a well probably known user stats version two patch. Which, which shows statistics uh, per table and per index of how many times, basically per table and per index counters, how many records have been read from certain table, from certain index, or by certain users. Uh, what do we have? Uh, yeah, MySQL bin log got a um, minus minus write database, so you can, if you want to change change from, if you have, have a, the, an application running on one database, and then you've got, you want to get the MySQL bin log output for it and then import data into the another database, that will work. And uh, it will work for, for row-based replication also. Uh, ex <coughs> expected updates are first updated upstream components. Whatever extra DBPBXT and federated managed to release. Uh, we're also working on partitioning my ISM key cache. Uh, basically, p key cache is partitioned by hash function, and that is uh, allows to reduce concurrency and contention. Uh, so, so that allows to reduce contention in certain high concurrency scenario. But I'm not able to show any figures for that yet. And we sh we're working on fixes that will provide better observability for row based replication. Basically, one feature that it if you're running row based, you'll be able to see the, which statement caused it, this row based event. They will be stored in the binary log. It will be optional, so it will be possible to analyze binary log and see which statement caused it every change. Oh. Beyond MariaDB, which is a smaller is, uh, we don't have any plans set. We, it depends on what will be ordered and contributed first, because we accept contributions. Uh, features we are working on right now are basically we, we, we took features from MySQL 6.0, which we think worth backporting, and, and ported it into 5.2 basic 3, and, and, that w and that would be the next release. So we'll port batch at key access feature uh, and fix it, no, no issues with it. And we'll port subquery optimizations. We'll backport them from 6.0 and backport those that were targeted from MySQL 6.x and also have a plan to add additional improvements. So this is what, at the moment, our idea of what will we have beyond 5.2 somewhere. Well, I don't have any dates, but my expectation, my personal expectation is that it will be we will have a beta of the, uh, sometime this year of these features. So that's all what we have. It concludes the talk, and if you have any questions, I'm here to answer. If you didn't catch it from the slides, we've got two leaflets, one that lists stable features, and another which shows that how MariaDB team is different from MySQL here. Well, thank you. Thank you.